The 1968 U.S. Olympic track and field team is considered one of the greatest ever assembled to represent the U.S. in the Olympics. They won 28 medals and set eight world records at the games in Mexico City. The team included some of the fastest runners in the world at the time, like sprinters Tommy Smith and John Carlos, who made history when they accepted their medals and then raised their fists during the playing of the U.S. national anthem in a protest full of symbolism. And they almost didn't even show up that year. Black men and women athletes have unanimously voted to fully endorse and participate in a boycott of the World Olympic Games in 1968. Members of the team threatened to stay home in protest of racist treatment of black athletes in America. They will not participate in the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City unless something is done about these terrible evils and injustices. So that in case our black boys don't want to go... So what would they have to do for you to go to Mexico? The boycott is still on. The story of this silent protest and the boycott that almost was starts with the buttons all three medal winners wore that day, the Olympic Project for Human Rights. The Olympic Project for Human Rights, or OPHR, was founded in 1967 by sociologist, educator, and former star athlete, Dr. Harry Edwards. It was a coalition of prominent Olympic athletes that threatened to derail American Olympic glory by opting out of the games, to protest the racism in sports that, for decades, had gone unaddressed. In the mid-20th century, sports seemed to be a leading example of improved racial equality in the United States. Black athletes like football player Kenny Washington and baseball player Jackie Robinson broke racial barriers by joining professional leagues in 1946 and 1947, which, until that point, had been whites only. College and professional sports teams gradually integrated from there, years ahead of racial segregation legally ending in the United States. So the media began to promote the black athlete as a symbol that racial democracy existed in the United States. If Jackie Robinson can make it, then why can't other Blacks make it? And so it was kind of a factor that was used to dismiss the question of institutionalized racism. But in the 1960s, the myth of racial progress in America began to dissolve. The Civil Rights Act ended legal segregation in 1964, but Black Americans continued to face institutionalized racism and police brutality. Integration simply wasn't successful in terms of improving Black people's lives and you needed to force further change. Years of frustration ultimately erupted in widespread violent riots. I think the further we get away from it, we underestimate the influence of the riots. The riots happened in a lot of urban cities across America. Black people still live in terrible socioeconomic conditions in the cities. And that was just as much a problem as Jim Crow laws. So how do you attract attention to that? A growing black power movement and black student movement in the 1960s emboldened black athletes to speak up about the racial injustices they endured off the field. There's no difference between the black and the white athlete. We're all out there sweating, we run on two legs. But it's a difference in the way society treats us after we leave the track. But with the 1968 Olympics coming up, black athletes saw an opportunity to push for change. The idea of a black Olympic boycott had been around since 1959. And it, it, it went through various fits and stops until you get to the Black Power Conference in 1967. And the Black Power Conference basically argued that you should use any means possible to force the government to pay attention to institutionalized racism. For Harry Edwards, that meant organizing the Olympic Project for Human Rights. And I think one of those means that are necessary right now is the Olympic boycott movement and the whole uh, revolt of the Black athlete in this country. He realized that he could use Black sports participation as a way to attract attention to the problem. The OPHR had five key demands, among them being to disinvite South Africa and Rhodesia, two countries practicing apartheid, from competing in the Games, the removal of openly racist International Olympic Committee President Avery Brundage, and hiring Black coaches to U.S. teams. The potential boycott became a hot topic in the news and of debate among athletes. All the Black athletes want to run but uh, we don't uh, want to close the door on millions of black people here in the United States. I don't see a boycott uh, really helping the Negro cause. In the months leading up to the games in Mexico City, the OPHR kept members of the press guessing whether they would attend or not. We will let you know about the future of your uh, Olympic team when we deem it proper and when we feel that you can handle that kind of information. Right now, we just don't think that you're ready. Tom, uh, when will come a determination whether you, Lee Evans, and others will or will not boycott uh, uh, the Olympics. I wish I could tell you. 
Ultimately, it came down to a vote. The decision was made that if there wasn't really a kind of unified or the majority of Black athletes would participate, uh, the boycott would be called off because those who did boycott, like Tommy Smith, would have been boycotting in vain. Another Black person simply would have taken their place. Even though most of the OPHR's demands remained unmet, the athletes headed to Mexico City with plans to make their own demonstration if the opportunity arose, which it did on October 16th, following the men's 200 meter final. OPHR members Tommy Smith and John Carlos won gold and bronze, respectively, and Smith set a new world record. After the race, they solemnly approached the medal stand. Shoeless, wearing black socks, accepted their medals, and just as the U.S. national anthem began to play, did this. For the full duration of the Star Spangled Banner, Smith and Carlos bowed their heads and each raised a black gloved fist in the air to protest the racial injustice in their home country and show solidarity with those fighting for equality. The fists are not the only symbolic gesture in this image, as Tommy Smith explained later. The right glove signifies the power within black America. The left glove signifies black unity. The scarf that was worn around my neck signified blackness. John Carlos and me wore black socks without shoes to also signify our poverty. Additionally, John Carlos wore his jacket unzipped, a violation of Olympic etiquette to show solidarity with working class Americans. He also wore beads to honor victims of lynching. And finally, all three medal winners, including silver medalist Peter Norman of Australia, wore buttons reading Olympic Project for Human Rights. There were some boos in the stadium last night. This moment was the ultimate manifestation of the work of Harry Edwards and the OPHR to intersect outspoken political activism with sport and it ended Smith and Carlos's Olympics. When the International Olympic Committee suspended them Friday, their credentials were taken away and they were told they could not stay in Mexico. They were dropped from the U.S. Olympic team and given 48 hours to leave Mexico. Sports journalist Howard Cosell criticized the U.S. Olympic Committee's decision in this fiery broadcast from Mexico City. They say the games are sports, not politics, something separate and apart from the realities of life. But the black athlete says he is a human being before he is an athlete. That he wants equality everywhere, not just within the arena. Tommy Smith and John Carlos were saying black athletes don't have it made in American society. We may be famous, but we face the same discrimination that other black people do. And we don't appreciate being used as a way to counter the, the black struggle coming out of black communities. Black athletes are black. People have multiple identities. I think Colin Kaepernick is representing a voice in the Black community, which is the same thing I think that Carlos and Smith were saying, that the Black struggle is more than just about integration and assimilation. It's also about empowering uh, this particular community. And people like Tommy Smith, Harry Edwards, John Carlos came from poor Black communities. Which is why this protest on the Olympic medal stand wasn't just about sports, as Tommy Smith explained to Howard Cosell the next day. Do you think you represented all black athletes in doing this? Uh, I can say I represented black America. I'm very proud to be a black man and also to have won the gold medal. And this, I thought, I could represent my people by letting them know that uh, I'm proud to be a black man. 